So the king of arguing against straw men, Bill Maher, has come out of the woodwork in a CNN interview to say that anyone who's Republican doesn't believe in democracy anymore, and anyone who's pro-Palestine just loves Hamas. You know what I've learned in life? People who are actually smart don't think they're smart, and people who are like Bill Maher and think they're the smartest guy in the room are actually kind of dumb. But go ahead, Bill Maher, keep spitting in the faces of the young voters like Hillary Clinton did, and if Donald Trump becomes president again, I can't wait to see you cry about it. Well, I'm a hypocrite because you were for the demonstrators uh, in 1968 or whatever it was when they were demonstrating against the Vietnam War. This yeah, is so this is demonstrating and, and protesting for a terrorist group. I mean, Hamas is... People who are protesting against Israel's actions in Gaza are not protesting in favor of Hamas. They're protesting that we have 30,000 dead Palestinians. They're protesting that the Israeli government is making it very difficult to get humanitarian aid in. But for Bill Maher to lazily say, hey, you know, anyone who's protesting, they're just pro-Hamas. I mean, they're literally ignoring the the ICJ saying that you need to stop all offensive operations within Rafa and Israel is not listening to the ICJ. The highest court in the world is unable to tell Israel what to do. So even the international community is starting to say, hey, we think what Israel is doing is beyond the pale. This is how you get change. You, have, you know, It's noisy. Some people do the, say the wrong thing. Some people go too far. But the whole tradition of this kind of expansion of rights, it's messy, it's chaotic. Uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're, you know, there's probably a bunch of excess, as there probably was in the 60s. There was the Black Panthers and the Weathermen and things like that. Yes. But they they think of you as somebody who was, you know, you were okay with all that, but you've, you've turned. I haven't turned. Yes, people have said to me, you make fun of the left more than you used to. And guilty, I have, because the left has changed. Now, the right has changed also, and even worse. I mean, the right doesn't believe in democracy anymore. I mean, they've thrown their lot in with this sociopath named Donald Trump. I think that's a lazy smear of all Trump supporters. So he's basically saying half the country doesn't believe in democracy anymore. I mean, they're all voting for Donald Trump, so they must believe in some sort of democracy. Again, the worst thing Donald Trump actually did during his presidency is not accept his loss during the 2020 election. But for Bill Maher to say that Republicans don't believe in democracy anymore, I just think that's bullshit, too. You think that, that men in particular have lost their young men, have lost the ability to communicate, to date, to know how to court women? Yes, I think this is going to be a very big problem. I think young men thought it was a great thing when Tinder came along. Oh my gosh, look, I don't even have to talk to a girl. It's all right here on my phone. I can just scroll through like it's a menu, like I'm ordering from Grubhub. So what is the upshot of this going to be? My guess would be a lot of horny, frustrated, angry Trump voters is I'm guessing where these guys are going to go. Life advice for me, how to meet women, is I would suggest you work on yourself and actually pursue the things that you want and eventually you will find a partner. And worked for me. I have a fiance now. I've been together with her for seven years. We're getting married next year. My suggestion for any young man who's having a hard time meeting a woman, work on yourself, put yourself out there, and you would be amazed what happens. You've always also pointed out the right has gone even crazier embracing Trump. I want to ask you why you think it happened. Because, you know, this was the party of Ronald Reagan. Free markets, free trade, loved immigration, very optimistic. Mm -hmm. What do you think made it, you know, it's now doer, pessimistic. America is, is, is you know, it's American carnage. Well, I think it, the basis of it is we started to hate each other. I mean, you mentioned Ronald Reagan. Famously, he used to have a drink at the end of the day, often with Tip O'Neill, who was the leader in the House and the Democrat. But they were just two Irish Pauls. They knew they weren't going to get along on many issues, but they didn't hate each other. They you know why I think we have this actual polarization? I've seen it. It's because people are sick of both Democrats and Republicans fucking us over. Can't get anything done when it comes to actually helping the American people. I want everyone to remember during the pandemic how hard we had to fight for those stimulus checks and they weren't even going to have it in the second package. Guess who actually helped push for their second stimulus check? Donald Trump. But the American people keep seeing the Republicans and Democrats, wow, they seem to agree on endless war and funding other militaries. We can't get anything done for the American people. We can't help homeless people. We can't help give people health care. Where other countries, it's universal and it's free at the point of service. We can't afford that shit, but, but we can definitely fund Israel and Ukraine endlessly. That's why people have become so polarized, because they see the Republicans and Democrats at this point is the uni party. When you hate people, you don't listen to them. So it doesn't matter how reasonable they might be. We have reached this place where each side thinks the other side is an existential threat. You hear that term mm -hmm. from both sides all the time. That is just a terrible place to be because we find ourselves in this situation where both sides are literally siding with enemies of America rather than the opposition party within the country. MAGA people with t-shirts that say, I'd rather be with Russia than Democrats. 
I mean, uh, I mean, Trump stood with Putin against our intelligence agencies. Uh, okay, to anyone who likes Vladimir Putin, you realize this guy kills people who disagrees with him in this country, right? It is insane seeing that people were like, I'd rather have Vladimir Putin than Joe Biden. And someone like me understanding the nuance, like, hey, United States has extrajudicially killed people. But there's a big difference between that and openly killing dissonance and openly suppressing freedom of the press. This is a terrible place to be, and it can happen here. The last chapter in the book is called Civil War, and it's, and you know, you hear more about it all the time. People who are actually pining for it. Civil war, come on, let's do this thing. Let's get this going. Let's have this national divorce. I think most adults you deal with and you actually know them and are friends with them, you can actually have a political dialogue. Donald Trump was a president for four years. The country did not melt. We're still here. And if Donald Trump becomes president again, maybe this is just the optimist in me, we'll survive him again and there will be another election. My suggestion through all of this is don't buy into the politics of fear. And also during the Democratic primary, the Democrats have clearly shown they have no interest in democracy either. They simply both wanna be in charge. What happens in January 2025 on the 20th when Inauguration Day rolls around and he didn't win the election? He's not just gonna go away. And if he wins and he's the president in January 20th, 2025, he's never gonna give that up because he doesn't understand the Constitution, he doesn't care about it, I don't think he's ever read it. He just knows power and winning, and our side is right. But if he becomes president again, there's no reason to go that extra mile and actually be like, no, I wanna be president forever. Have you ever seen the president's age? It's not pretty. And I can't see Donald Trump wanting to do that for the rest of his life.